What's up everyone and welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. Today on the table we have another match from the first round of the Massacre at Hardhome. Game of Thrones second edition tournament held in Cleveland, Ohio. On the left we have David, on the right we have Austin. David has set up a triple duped Danny here uh, with a Rose Road. He's playing Targaryen Banner of the Rose. On the right we have Stark Fealty. Uh, he's got Bran set up, a duped uh, Sir Edmure Tully. And it looks like a alt art great hall uh, on the bottom there. And plots we got summer harvest flipped into march to the wall. So march will take Danny out with her dupes. My hand was garbo and so was yours. And it looks like David just wanted to draw a lot of cards. He was at risk there from the march to the wall. Just thought he put all copies of Danny out. I believe I asked him after this game uh, why he didn't hold at least one Danny back, maybe two, uh, when you think your opponent might have March. Maybe he just bet the Stark Fealty didn't play March to the Wall, but I don't know. It's a, it's a risky bet. So he's lost all copies of Danny are now in the discard pile. He's got only a Rose Run on the table. At least he drew into four more cards. We'll see if he can come back from that, but uh, he's got a Sir Edmure Tully duped on, across the board. Which I think is a pretty good uh, advantage there to start here. And it looks like uh, Austin, the Stark player, is marshalling first. Bran is back in play. Not really. Not a fan of this. And he's got Arya out there now, triggering her ability to get a duplicate. Another interesting thing, if he uh, thought his opponent was going to play March to the Wall, maybe Summer Harvest wasn't the right plot to play, only getting six gold out of it, which is okay, I guess, but maybe he really was just betting on his opponent not having uh, March to the Wall. But David, if you are watching this, feel free to leave in the comments below and let us know what was going through your head there. He did say his hand was garbage, though, um, and I, I can't remember if he mulliganed or not, but uh, we got a Targaryen Loyalist. Duped Viserion. Oh, not as rough as it could have been. And Crown on Sir Edmure Tully is gone with the dupe. All right, maybe he is not out of this yet. Um, to you, sir. So it looks like we're into challenges here. Looks like we got a military with Arya stealthing Viserion, which should go unopposed, of course. No gold left on either sides, it looked like. So we got a dupe of Viserion going away for claim, which which we expect. And then Brand coming in on the power challenge. No power to claim, though. So it goes unopposed, puts more power on his house card for his opponent to steal. And we got a military coming through from Viserion, slapping back, getting rid of the dupe from Arya, which is uh, pretty huge. She uh, loses that military icon now. And unopposed military. So actually, the target player, David, has come out on top here, 3-1. to one, And they tie for dominance. So this is the second match from round one. We already posted one match from round one. And if you want to see another match from round one, go check out the Massacre at Hard Home live stream on the channel uh, from the day. But these matches were recorded on the side. So we have uh, two matches per round coming up. So make sure you subscribe and keep an eye on the playlist as it gets updated uh, with new matches. A couple matches from each round. So it looks like a second... Second March? No, what's happening here? Oh, okay, sorry. Time of plenty into Summer Harvest. I guess the taxation was caught there, and David had already flipped his plot. But it uh, looks like Austin didn't change his mind on which plot he was playing, so he seemed to be okay with it. But Summer Harvest slapping into a Time of Plenty is definitely a better Summer Harvest hit. Getting three cards on both sides, too. I will gain eight. And it looks like Austin has chosen himself to go first, winning initiative again. That dupe sucked so much. I'm going to pay one. Marshall another great So he's got two great halls now in play. That's going to help this Stark deck out a lot. Uh, also having Fealty, he should be able to get his big dudes out as soon as he draws them without issue. Kneel those. Which he does kneel two great halls here, spends two gold. And Roos Bolton, one of my favorite Stark cards. 
He does have the two best icons. <laughs> that is going to make things interesting. Um, I will pay four. Winterfell. And Winterfell is now online, giving plus one to each Stark character, which I think is what he's indicating there with those tokens. And Winterfell being a great uh, counter to Targaryen uh, to be able to keep your guys protected as long as there's no winter plot uh, in play by your opponent to stop them from... Uh, Triggering their abilities during challenges, which, uh, you know, includes Dracarys. And Marjorie Tyrell from the corsets on the board. Able to give plus three strength to a character after she kneels. And we got Jogo. Let us start with a. You don't have any you don't control any other blood. So what? You don't control any other blood riders. No. Um, let us start with a power challenge. Looks like a power challenge. Stealthing Jogo with Arya. Okay. And that'll be unopposed. Claiming a power, obviously. Um, Three to two now for the Stark player. Cards in hand. Six. Strength attacking right now? Yes. Alright. Um, Looks like he's debating attacking with Roos here. Initiate a military challenge? Do you have any reactions to the challenge? Uh, to the challenge being initiated? No. Only a winner fell. Okay. So military for four? Uh, yes. So Austin there, uh, triggering Winterfell at the start of the challenge. Uh, I think it's Intrigue. Should be five strength, because plus one from Winterfell. Um, I will win and claim. Well, maybe it's military. Yeah, it's military, sorry. Cool. Actually. Yeah. And it looks like the Targaryen loyalist was claimed. Okay. Intrigue. Now we have Marjorie coming back on an Intrigue challenge. Looks like it's going to go unopposed. Claim of one. Good hit. And now Joe go on a military challenge. At four? At four, yes. Okay. Um... Of course, I'll go on opposed. No defenders. Uh, Arya. And Arya is dead. Okay. Um, dominance to me. Mm, yes. And dominance to the Starks. Uh, Brand standing in a gold save there. And it looks like we're tied 4 4. Standing. Standing. Sir. I'm going to take a second, I'm sorry. It's I, fine. I need to think about this. Because... Since that's my Iron Throne, technically, I can't get an Iron Throne. No, you cannot. Hey, pay attention to your game you're losing. Uh, actually, it's tied right now. Did you just say pay attention to that game you're losing? It's tied right now. For now. It's so cute. Yep. And we have retaliation into noble cause. Well, so the yeah. Stark player is going first again. Yes, you are, sir. Is this cool. time, though, uh, to claim um, across the board. I will draw two. Um, 
first. That's a big deal. Um, I will gain one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. You have so much account right now. Yeah, it's kind of the goal. So we got the two Great Halls knelt here to uh, get fast Eddie into play for basically free due to the reduction off Noble Cause. Winterfell's duped. Um, that's honestly a better play. Uh, I'm going to play four. Ward. And Ward is used to steal Marjorie Tyrell, which is super huge. Wow. And he's going to milk Jogo, which we just heard Austin say he feels it's not worth it, but uh, he's just going to do it anyway. But it, it actually might help him defend challenges. I mean, your opponent has two claim, and you want to defend that military by Jogo or, or the power, especially the military. And he's getting plus one strength for each character in your dead pile. I think it's only plus two right now, but still, turning that off is pretty huge. And we got Quaith played out straight here, not ambushed, to do her shenanigans. That is what and we got Sir Jorah Mormont. So David on the left here easily uh, goes wide again after losing a character. Um, but they're all little two-cost weenies pretty much. But uh, the Stark player here has to just make sure that... Uh, yeah, he just realizes Winterfell buffs Marge because Ward does give the Stark affiliation there. So he's, he is using those tokens... On his characters to remind him that they are plus one strength. Uh, can I see your discard? Absolutely. It's all Daenerys. Yep, and Crown. Just making sure. Um, I know, I totally run three copies of Crown. Yeah. It's the dream. Dodge. Uh, so I, I would think as a Stark player, you might want to play a little more defensive here because. You're only going to kill a Targary Targaryen loyalist on military who's already kneeling, so he, you know, it doesn't really matter, and he's still going to have all those military icons to come back. So I think he's got to play defensive on the military if you don't want to lose two decent characters, because most likely if he lost a two claim military right now, he's going to be killing Bran, which is no good. But you need him on the board against Targ, uh, or killing uh, Marjorie Tyrell, which uh, you just paid that four juicy gold for. You want to keep her on the board. But you do have to watch out for that confiscation flip by your opponent on the next turn to try to get rid of Ward. So you might have to use Marjorie here as best you can and then just kill her anyway. So looks like a power challenge. Uh, nine strength, I believe. And Viserion does block. Okay. You win it. Um... Which I don't think was a smart choice here. I'm not sure what he's trying to do. He's now as fast as he knelt, who's a big military body that he would probably prefer on defense. I mean, Roos is 5 strength, and Marjorie can give him another 3, so that's 8. But that's still not enough to stop Jogo, Quaith, and uh, Ser Jorah. I'm going to do an intrigue challenge. So he's going to do a 5 strength intrigue challenge. Maybe he's going to use his Roost's ability here, sorry, to uh, win the challenge or force David to kneel more than he wants. And then maybe he can... Uh, uh, but he still, he still wouldn't be able to uh, kill all the military icons on the table. So I believe it's X strength is Roost Bolton's strength is what he gets to kill. That total amount of characters. And he's at a 5 right now. So, I mean, he could kill Jogo and Quaith, I believe. And now he's an 8, actually. <laughs> so now he can kill, like, Jogo and Ser Jorah. But, I mean, one gold across the board could lead to a Nightmares here and uh, really rain on uh, Austin's parade here. He is going to trigger Roost. Here we go. Problem is he's about to lose two claim on the defense, so he just sacrificed Roost. He's gonna go down to one character on board, which will be fast Eddie on his own. 
And that might lead to a march to the wall, and uh, that will hurt uh, the Stark player a ton. Uh, I don't think it was too smart to go aggressive uh, when your opponent has retaliation on the board, but that's just me. That's just me. Unless, you know, the, your opponent has a smaller board and you going aggressive leads them losing characters that they could challenge you back with. But in this case, this board is very wide, and uh, we'll see if he what he can do here. But that weird math, uh, eight strength were the characters. Six. Um, eight. There you go. So eight strength were the characters gets Viserion gone, Jora and uh, Quaith. Right. To you? To me? Yep. So, um, first things first, um, military challenge. And military challenge should only be three strength because he is milked. Oh, and Winterfell blocks any trigger business. Still win. Yep. So go unopposed. Claim of two. And here comes the two claim, which is going to hurt. So Marjorie dies and Bran dies, which doesn't seem too bad. But like I said, now fast that he's out there exposed by himself. Uh, why is Bran your discard? And that, uh, that's screaming march to the wall there. You going to then play Fire and Blood? Oh, Winterfell? No. That's for the challenge. This is after oh, okay. the challenge. After the challenge. So, yeah, Winterfell does not stop the Fire and Blood trigger after the challenge is over. And power challenge. Yep. Claim two. Yep. So, Sirion is back in play uh, due to Fire and Blood. Um, and he gets an unopposed ooh. two claim mil uh, power challenge, sorry. And the turn, uh, neither of us gets Dom. And nope. Dom goes nowhere because they're both out of money. And that no standing characters. So here's if uh, David on the left, the Targaryen player, does have a march to the wall. Here's where you play it and uh, send Eddie bye bye. And uh, this could be over for the Stark player. Went a little too aggressive on the retaliation turn, in my opinion. Yes. And there it is march to the wall versus barring the gates. Yeah, game turn quickly. Um, I am going to. A lot of bad stuff. Opt to go first. So, David the Targaryen player is one initiative. He's going first. Wow. Five. Only has five gold to work with, but at least he has two characters on the board to start. Get some Illyria's estate out there to help him with economy. And he's sitting on it all, so didn't draw into Cal Drogo. I lost turn three. Oh, I'm sorry. I had no economy set up. And it looks like we're over to the Stark player for marshalling. One, two, three, four, five. Who has five gold to work with and two great halls. And while we wait for Austin to marshal here, guys, make sure you hit that like button on every single video, especially the Thrones videos you're watching right now, uh, to get them, you know, bumped up in the YouTube results so other people find this awesome game. And more people find the channel. Uh, wow, this is and if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. so we are trying to hit our 3,000 subscriber goal, uh, which we have, I can't remember, I looked recently, but like 130-ish to go. And then we'll do a, like a nice long 12-hour live stream playing Thrones all day, giving away prizes. Uh, so yeah, help us hit 3,000 subscribers, and uh, we'll, we'll get there. I gotta try staying this somehow. So Roos is back. Remember, he was just sacrificed, so he can be played again. He's only in the discard pile. And we got uh, Catelyn Stark, who's uh, stopping shenanigans when she's in a challenge, which is great against Targaryen. Military challenge for three. Yeah, I think we had a military challenge here to start. Three strength with Jogo. First. I, I so he's going to do Winterfell here on this military challenge. Stop shenanigans. Since there's a dragon standing and money, throws Roos in there. Yep, you have five. Um, you and Roos fully blocks the challenge. Yeah, I think that's only for when he's attacking, isn't it? Uh, his ability? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's for when he's only attacking. Yeah, Roos doesn't work on defense, yeah. only attacking. They're just double checking that there. I don't think you're expecting me to do that. And Roos could, if, if Roos could work on defense, he could be triggered because remember the Stark player does have a uh, winter plot. I believe barring the gates is a winter plot, so Winterfell does not stop him from triggering uh, abilities on, on the Winterfell turn there, or the Winterfell challenge. Cool. 
It went down. That's and it. power challenge blocked by Catelyn. Yep, standing. And dominance goes to the Targaryens. And they both play close call, looking to move characters out of the dead pile into the discard pile. I think I need to. Move Bran. Okay, I will move March. And Marge and Bran are the targets of the close call. And they obviously both each draw a card, since uh, there's no winter plot on either side. And the Stark player, I believe, would have won uh, initiative there. And I think uh, he's chosen the Targaryen player to go first. Or not. Actually, no. Sorry, he did win initiative and chose himself to go first. And gets a little finger on the board, which is a good call right now to help him refill, refill up his hand. And get him some more options. I still run him just because he's efficient. And Rose Road for a limited. So building up even more economy on the board here. So if this game keeps going, uh, Stark player definitely uh, winning on the uh, economy race here. And then he plays uh, Marriage Pact on Jogo. So he can't really attack or defend at all here. Just going to stand there and give three strength to uh, Dominance. Oh, wait. Did either of us draw our card for close call? Yes. I did not. Well, that's my chance. So it sounds like Austin, the Stark player, did not draw a card for close call, but uh, David did. And uh, Stark player feels he missed his chance, so he's just not going to draw a card. But I believe it has to happen because the win reveal does go off. Unless it says you may draw a card. Well, well played, good sir. But we got uh, Knight of Flowers in play and uh, Viserys Targaryen. To try to get rid of Marriage Pact here. I'm sure that's... Uh, it's good timing on the the Viserys Targaryen. Let's uh. But if he can Winterfell on a challenge where he kills Viserys, uh, he won't be able to trigger that ability. So it looks like we got an intrigue here with Roos and Catelyn coming in uh, for ten strength total. I can't oppose it. Okay, cool. Unopposed. No defenders. So Winterfell not triggered on that challenge. I do don't I think, think he's going to do Roos. Do you roos? <laughs> Will the Roos be loose? I just don't know how important the Knight of Flowers is to you. I think he's debating killing the Knight of Flowers here, which... The immortal question. How important I don't see why you don't. Um, the problem is he'll get hit with a military challenge back. Probably have to kill Littlefinger and leave Catelyn alone on the board. All right. And Roos does kill Knight of Flowers. And we got an entry. Okay, sorry. Intrigue claim there. Now power with Littlefinger. I will. And no defenders on that either. Stark player at six power now to seven, I believe, across the board. And now we have military challenge with Sirion. So the Stark player being really aggressive and not thinking about uh, how he's going to get hit back here. And he's just letting the, the Targaryen player basically get more out of each challenge phase by him going so so aggressive. Because now quickly the Targ player has just shot up to looks like 11 power to 6. Ever since you had that good turn around, I've just been so of course confiscation played to get rid of marriage pact and then calling the banners used to get three gold right who's going first I'm gonna let you go first, actually. So the Stark player won initiative, but this time he's letting his opponent go first. Yeah. 
So now we got a great all on the other side of the board. And the Great Hall and the Lugos Estate knelt. And there's Miri, so seeing his first seven coster, uh, other than Danny on that setup. <laughs> and Miri's going to cause some trouble, but Winterfell and Catelyn Stark are usually the ways to stop that. But that pressure is going to make him use those abilities on those challenges. And not on others. Let's see if the Stark player can recover his board and keep a board through the challenge phase, not get uh, knocked down to one character again. Rob Stark will help. Oh, wait, actually, I mind if I rewind for one thing? Just a cost reduction. So it looks like he did. forgot to stand his house card for fealty and he wants to use it there. Save a gold on uh, uh, Rob Stark. Two gold. And we got a Tumblestone Knight. Oh, tumbles. And it looks like he's sitting on three or four gold. Maybe not playing anything else. Sadly, I just don't have one of my heart tree grows. So I have to pass back to you. And over to the Targaryen player for challenges. We're gonna go with an and we got Miri coming in on the Intrigue Challenge. That is very cool. And one gold spent to Nightmares Miri Maz Murder, who uh, is now blank. So that entry challenge is happening. Um, it, how much power do you need? Uh, four. So we just heard the Targaryen player is four power away from winning. And it's going to go unopposed. And we get uh, Jory Cassell discarded on entry claim. He's not the only one. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and... Military for three. So a military challenge with Jogo, three strength, you can power for three. three power away from winning on the Targ side. So he's got to debate whether he needs to defend this. Um, oh yeah, he's going to lose it. He might as well block the unopposed with the uh, Tumblestone Knight, who's uh, three strength from Winterfell. Or he fully blocks here with Rob Stark, and looks like he's choosing the Rob Stark route. Take a renown. I'll then go ahead and. Um, and then a power challenge of one strength. Probably should block that with the Tumblestone Knight, which he does. Cool. And over to the Stark player for challenges. Just has Catelyn standing. Five. And of course, power challenge. You got to get that uh, target player's power count down. But uh, Sirion's going to block the unopposed. And Dominus should go to the Stark player, who saved some gold there. Oh, Dom, yeah, the and it looks like the Stark player is at 8 power. 9, actually, considering Rob Stark's renown. And on the other side, 10 power, I believe. Oh, thank you, buddy. I, do I have the trigger? And Confiscation gets rid of the milk off Jogo. Who's going first, though? Um, and Counting Copper slipped on the other side. So Targ player is going to draw into a bunch of cards. So still a tight game here. Uh, 10 to 9, I believe, if I've counted correctly. Could still go either way, but these challenge challenge phases have been pretty swingy. Seems like one character, one player goes pretty aggressive, and then uh, you know loses a lot. Doesn't really gain anything in the challenge phase, and then it swings back the other way. But overall, the target player has been kind of keeping ahead here. And how long can Miri be kept in check? Oh, Blackfish! Another renowned body on the board. Ready for no hand? This, is usually, this, Stark is, this deck usually has no hand until I turn three. You and we got another Jory Cassell uh, in play is going to help save a Stark character from dying and sacrificing himself. Against any other deck, this would be a severe overextension. I mean, I could keep two characters on the board. So can the Stark player close this? So you have four, five, six, seven, oh, it looks like they're counting the economy here to figure out if uh, he actually could afford that. 
Good. Yep. And I believe with Fealty, he's got the extra goal from Rose Road and the two great hauls. Uh, that should be enough, yeah. Let's go ahead and pay one. So Kings Road out on the target side. He's getting some extra economy boost here, even though he's only got a two-goal plot. He was a great haul. Are we going to get another big body on the other side to be able to stop the Starks? Randall Tarley will help for sure. That is a, that is a big buff, scary character. Oh, wait. Where's my Daisy at? She would be on the ground. And saving a gold on the target side. And has a dragon standing. Cars could uh, definitely swing this in the target player's favor this turn. If the Stark player is not careful with his uh, Winterfell trigger and his Catelyn Stark uh, protection. So now you got to do the math. As a Stark player going first here, you gotta, you got to be careful. You, if you can't uh, close it out on your turn, you would leave yourself uh, big time open if you went uh, very aggressive here and then maybe lose the game on the defense. So... You got to start calculating what you can defend, and if you can block and gain renown and you're, you stop your opponent from gaining anything, you might as well just play more defensively. We'll see what he does here, but uh, he's been leaning towards the more aggressive play, which is kind of what the Stark players usually like to do. And we do have Jory and uh, Blackfish going in on a challenge here. Not sure if it's power or military, but no Winterfell trigger. So looks like Randall Tarley's blocking. And Lord Randall's ride to give him another 5 strength, which also buffs him. So he's getting a 5 strength off of uh, the Knight of Flowers we see in the dead pile there. So it stands him, triggering his ability. It's 10 strength. And blocks and gains a renown on the defense. So great use of Randall there. Nice defensive uh, Lord Renly's ride. So that may have uh, screwed the Stark player over here and lost him the game in this round just by kneeling out two characters and getting nothing out of it. And Randall being able to block and still gain a power, and he's now standing to come back on the offense. Um, sure, I think that's and yeah, I think the Stark player realizes that's, that's it. Uh, play it out for because we're on camera? Yeah. <laughs> but they're still going to play it out, David says, because they're on camera. Thanks a lot, David. Never yeah, it's nice to see the game end. Because you never know, someone can always make mistakes or goof up. So Austin's going to go all in here, looks like, on the power challenge. So maybe that was a military challenge to start then. So power challenge here with Tumblestone Knight, Rob Stark, and Catelyn Stark. Um, I'll go ahead and... Um, 10, 13, 15. All right. So 15 strength on the defense to block. Randall gets a, gets a power to that. And that's it. They're just going to call it there. Because we know Mary, Mary could just come back on the power challenge on a pose and close it out. So good job for David. Good job on both players. Thanks a lot for playing under camera there and uh, playing it through. And uh, yeah, the Targ Rose comes out on top. Guys, if you'd like to support these videos uh, and this channel online, you can do so. Patreon.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Like the people you see scrolling by on the screen. Those amazing, amazing people have done. Uh, click the link in the description below check out more information on that and uh yeah shout out to brad there as you see uh, for hosting the tournament uh, running this fan made tournament it actually was a road to stalic event so the winner gets a uh, room and uh, first round buy and ticket and everything to the tournament and uh yeah we got more videos coming up from the tournament uh two per round like i said so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little alarm bell notification button beside that to be notified every time a video goes up or we go live but either way, thanks a lot for the support, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.